G'day everyone, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for another edition of Just The Tips. I've liked filming outside, had to move it inside today. The thing I've learned about Americans, particularly in this neighborhood, is they all love to mow their lawns, what feels like every day. So, for an acoustic point of view, had to record inside today. I must admit, didn't see a lot of football this weekend and that is why I'm unable to give you a round review. I spent a tumultuous weekend in New York City. It was a fantastic time pissed down with rain the entire time pretty sure i'm sick now as a result but had a great time starting to catch up on my sleep and in today's video we're going to go through round eight for just the tips in terms of round review content we still will get nine things i learned by druzy uh, which will be out some point soon it may already be out by the time i barely got my head together to really plan this week's videos but uh, today we are going to get into round eight and my predictions before we get into it, we'll shout out the sponsors of today's video, manscaped.com, for all your male grooming needs. You can get 20% off and free shipping by using the code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout. Remember, they do a wide variety of male grooming products from the Lawnmower 4.0, the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Head Trimmer, and everything else that you might want to need, like colognes, ball moisturizers. Yes, ball moisturizers. Everything you need is on the website, and you get pr great products and at an even better price, 20% off and free shipping with TRUEFOOTY20. I try the video with this little number on at the moment. My sister insisted I wear it. We were going to get I Love New York t-shirts. Uh, we thought it was a bit dorky, so we thought we'd get the beanie, which is very dorky as well. I don't know how much I'll wear this in public. But my hair's a mess. I'm a mess. But let's get into the tips. Round 8 kicks off with a very, very good clash between Carlton and Brisbane at Marvel Stadium. This one is giving me some angst as to who to tip, to be honest. Carlton coming off a fantastic 108-point victory over the Eagles in Perth. Hard to know what to make from that game. Is it Carlton clicking and getting back into form after a bit of an uninspiring run? Is it West Coast just collapsing under the, the uh, I guess, the adversity of having to play Far from their best 22. Probably a little bit tired, a little bit demoralized after getting belted several weeks in a row. To be, to be honest, I think it was a perfect storm of all those things combining. Carlton's midfield was, you know, closer to the, the final form that it will take in terms of personnel that were available. They had some of their best players back in that side. Chera, Akers, Walsh, of course, had a big game as well. Um, and, you know, their forwards are amazing. Charlie Kernow kicking nine goals. That wasn't new to us. It was just an onslaught uh, from start to finish. Uh, I went back and, and watched it. And um, also looked at some of Dad's co uh, commentary. He wasn't very happy with the effort from the Eagles. So I don't know how much to too, take too much out of this game. Carlton probably get, get a bit of confidence out of bit of touch, bit of form. And the Brisbane Lions are a, a tough opponent. And they've, they've just beaten uh, Fremantle by eight goals. And that's sort of the result you'd expect. Midfield looking very, very strong in particular. I guess the only question for Mark for them has been their form away from the Gabba. I don't think they've won in Melbourne yet this year. I want to tip Carlton because they might be back into form now. And Brisbane have looked a little bit shaky away from home. But something's telling me Brisbane win this game. I just think they've been better this year. I'll back them in to correct their, you know, uninspiring form in, uh, away from home this year. And I'll say Brisbane win this by 10 points. Then we've got a bottom of the ladder clash between Richmond and West Coast. And who would have thought that at the start of the year, that Richmond would well and truly be considered a uh, bottom four team, but certainly on current form. Their third last with just six points and a disappointing loss at home to the Gold Coast Suns, who have had their own issues with form. Of course, they've just beaten North and, and Richmond, so maybe we're seeing some improvement from them as well. But Richmond looking a mile off it at the moment. I think perhaps uh, I personally underrated how much transition at the start of the year this side is going through. There's a lot of youth in that team, a lot of tired old veterans not contributing to the same standard. Obviously, the load off for Taranto and Hopper, you think, yes, they should improve because they played finals last year, and that's probably true, but they're looking more and more like a rebuilding side at the moment. This week, they've got the easiest opposition they could possibly ask for in West Coast for them to potentially notch their second win of the season. West Coast just had that Probably a solid month of good effort and bad quarters had let West Coast down against some decent opponents, and they had almost gotten blown away in those games, but fought back well. And against Carlton, there was just very little resistance. So the optimistic part of me thinks West Coast has it in them to challenge against a Richmond side that is not good and is nowhere near as good as Carlton on current form. But equally, I wonder if this, this apathy that we saw from West Coast on Saturday night, is that just going to be a one-week wonder, or are they going to carry that poor form into this week as well? I'm going to say, regardless, Richmond win this game by eight goals. Then we've got a good clash, I reckon, between Geelong and Adelaide at GMHBA Stadium. Geelong, since the first three rounds of the season, have come home strong 
Uh, you know, big wins over Hawthorne on West Coast and then back that up with a huge win against Sydney and then a, uh, a good win against Essendon on the weekend as well. Essendon confirming to be a pretty uh, competitive side this year and should be playing finals on current form. Uh, they come up against the Crows who have been uh, very, very impressive this year for a young side on the rise. Last week, 16 points up at three-quarter time and then they get absolutely Collingwood uh, where Collingwood steal the victory late in the game. Is there enough form for me to think Adelaide are a chance in this game? Well, I think because it's GMHBA, this is a tough ask for every team. Geelong are hitting their straps. Adelaide are talented enough to make a game of it, but this is where I think the experience and the class for Geelong will ultimately see them prevail. And I think this could be about 40 points, to be honest, to the Cats, which is no slight on Adelaide. I just think Geelong have hit form. They've got stars all over the field. I'll be amazed if Adelaide win this, but I would love to see it. So Geelong by 39 points. Next, we have the Gold Coast Suns hosting the Melbourne Demons. And when I consider Gold Coast form, actually, their last five has been a fairly reasonable run. In that time, they've beaten Geelong, admittedly a Geelong that was far off their best. They've beaten North Melbourne by seven goals, and then last week beaten Richmond again. North Melbourne and Richmond, uh, you know, bottom four sides or bottom five sides, whatever the latter is right now. But we've seen a distinct improvement in that period. The two losses were against a very strong St Kilda by 53 points and then a narrow loss to Fremantle. That isn't a great result, but holistically over the five weeks there, we have seen a slow improvement from Gold Coast here, which might be enough for them to be a sneaky chance of making this a good game. Melbourne, on the other hand, only one blip in their last five. They're looking like the premiership contender I expected them to be. Just beat North Melbourne by 90 points, and it does show how far North Melbourne have dropped off on current form as well. So I do think Melbourne should win this game, but maybe it's not the foregone conclusion we once expected. Maybe Gold Coast have improved. And I do think that the Gold Coast have the ability to, to bring Melbourne down to their level in this game and keep it to about four goals. So I'll say the Demons win this game by four goals. Next, we've got GWS hosting the Western Bulldogs at Monica in Canberra, which is important to consider because GWS have lost, I think, uh, eight of their last nine or even all of their last nine games at this venue. The Giants are coming off a very spirited victory against the Sydney Swans in the uh, Battle of the Bridge, if they even call it that anymore. What a win that is. And it's interesting to contemplate to what extent is that Sydney being so far off the pace right now when you consider, you know, their huge loss to Geelong, their home loss to Port Adelaide. They're looking a long way off the side that we know they can be. But equally, GWS has proven to be this little nuggety, difficult to beat side. They're not going to compete for finals realistically. But each and every game, they're generally putting up a bit of a fight, which could make this contest against the Western Bulldogs interesting. The the dogs have actually started to put together some reasonable form. Their last victory obviously was against the Hawks last week by five goals, but they've won four of their last five with just the one loss uh, against Port Adelaide in Adelaide as well. So as far as form goes, the Bulldogs are cruising to some extent, but I think the Giants are good enough to make this a tough ask for them. If we see the flaky version of the dogs come out, GWS could easily win this, but the form at Monica throws me a little bit and it makes me less willing to tip the Giants here in an upset. If this was a genuine home game at their home stadium, i consider this upset of the round. I'd probably still tip the dogs. So that's what I'm going to say. I won't waffle anymore. The Bulldogs should win this game, but I'll be surprised if it gets out to more than four or five goals. So I'll say the Bulldogs win this game by 23 points. Next, we have Fremantle versus Hawthorne at Optus Stadium. Who would have thought this would be a somewhat even contest or in current form uh, when you consider how much Fremantle has dropped off lately? I wouldn't really go as far as to say that uh, Fremantle are a genuine spoon contender, so it's not an even contest, but there is genuine potential for Fremantle to drop this game. The run of form for Fremantle throughout the whole season really hasn't been great, but they've dropped three of their last four. Last week, getting belted by a much better side in the Brisbane Lions, and then the week before that, perhaps most concerningly of any result they lost to the Bulldogs by 50 points and uh, since the Derby and perhaps even including the Derby they've coasted a little bit with just the one win over the Gold Coast Suns a lot of issues going there Hawthorne on the other hand have had a spirited two or three weeks where they have looked a lot closer to that next group of teams they had a, a narrow loss against Adelaide a narrow loss against GWS who we just talked about as being somewhat plucky this season and then a five goal loss to a, a, a finals contender side in the Bulldogs who have a lot of experience so that's why you know on current form Hawthorne do have the ability to go and shock Fremantle here. I think there's a genuine chance of that. Will I bet on it? No. 
What I expect here is Fremantle to lift in front of a home crowd. I don't expect a strong or polished performance here by Fremantle by any stretch because their form has been so indifferent this year, but I can just imagine it now. The easily pleased Fremantle crowd is going nuts at three-quarter time as Tame Impala rings through the stadium. <laughs> I'm just shit-staring. Uh, I think Fremantle fans are actually quite pragmatic about the way things are at the moment. I think most will admit this is a droppable game for them. I will say Fremantle lift in the same way they listed, lifted against the Gold Coast Suns, but... Gee whiz, the fact that we're talking about this as a real possibility shows how much Fremantle's fallen. Not trying to sink the boot in, my team sucks way worse, but just calling it like I see it. We've got another good fixture next with Port Adelaide taking on Essendon at Adelaide Oval. Port Adelaide have won their last four games. Most impressively, perhaps their most impressive win of the season, especially when you consider the Sydney win looks less good because Sydney have turned to shit since then, but... Beating St Kilda in Melbourne at Marvel Stadium is a tough ask, and it was one that I thought, you know, they would be good enough to get it close, but to actually beat St Kilda on current form shows that they've taken a step and uh, genuinely uh, a finals, not lock, I mean, I'd be an idiot to say finals lock at this point of the season, but they're certainly looking like it at the moment and looking like a very strong team. A couple of weeks ago, Essendon had just beaten Melbourne at Adelaide Oval, which is a good sign uh, because this is where that game will be played. So the fact that they beat a good side on that venue will give them some confidence. Since then, they've had two clashes against two of the better sides of the comp in Collingwood and Geelong and fallen short in both games, but not uh, by any extent to which gives me concern. The fact that they got so far ahead of uh, Collingwood shows that there's something about them and a five goal loss to Geelong on current form doesn't really sway my confidence. So this is winnable for them. However, I just looked through the last five clashes between these two sides. Port Adelaide have annihilated them in like three or four out of those five occasions, which does suggest that head-to-head, Port Adelaide do have a knack of picking apart Essendon. So that does factor into it for me. If the side has a wood on another side, even though Essendon over the last couple of years haven't been great, as these two teams intersect, I think we're expecting a gallant loss for uh, for Essendon here. Maybe it's just because we're still so new to this concept of Essendon potentially being a good side that I don't trust them yet. Perhaps it's that. But I'll tip conservatively here. Port Adelaide win this game by 31 points. But anything could happen. Then we have Collingwood and Sydney at the MCG. And uh, not too long ago, you would have thought a potential grand final preview. And that could still be the case. Uh, but Sydney really have fallen off in a big way. Collingwood have won four of their last five. Their one loss this entire season actually has been against the Lions at the Gabba, which was a good, strong performance. So for everything we've seen from Collingwood, they haven't faltered yet. They've gotten close. It's been obviously the uh, Anzac Day game where they're five goals down and came back to steal the victory. Got a, a deficit of 16 points at three-quarter time against the Crows, came back and win. This side has... It just oozes character. And no matter the situation of a game, you can almost be certain they will come back and make a game of it, which makes them a very scary prospect. I do wonder though, at what point will this comeback style game not be sustainable? I don't have the answer to that yet because they're still probably the best side in the competition right now. And they're coming up against the Swans who have dropped four of their last five, a 50 point loss to the Demons, a two point loss at home to Port, a 93 point loss to Geelong, and a one point loss to GWS. And I, I did just talk up GWS, GWS's ability to mix it with some good teams on occasion. But for a side that is genuinely, uh, should be considering themselves a premiership contender, dropping that game with the season placed the way it is for Sydney is pretty poor form. So do I expect Sydney's form to click back into gear in a big way randomly? Yes, I do think that will happen at some point. But Collingwood at the MCG is a tough ask. This, it's not beyond the realm of possibility. I certainly, have, certainly haven't written off Sydney as a strong team on their day. The MCG, I don't think, holds too many fears for them. Is there some sort of grand final day scarring? I'm not a huge believer in that, but it's possible, I suppose. Look, this game does have the potential for City to come out and make a statement and just turn their season on its head. That's not the craziest suggestion, but... What's equally possible is a nine-goal Collingwood victory. The more I talk about this game, the less certain I am of it. Naturally, Collingwood will be large favourites, but I've watched enough footy to know that this is the sort of game where you'll see a random Sydney victory here, a convincing one, and it will just challenge everything you know about football. I will still tip Collingwood here. I'm not that brave. Come on, guys. I certainly think it's more likely that Collingwood win this game in a big way than Sydney do but it's, it's still possible. So I will say Collingwood by 50 points. I don't think that analysis made sense, but I hope it came across because that was as disorganized as in my head as it, the way it came out. <laughs> the final game of the round is North Melbourne versus St Kilda. North Melbourne's form 
is up there with probably the second worst in the competition uh, right behind West Coast. Uh, some of their form has been ridiculous. Let's look at their last five. There's been a, a three-goal loss to Hawthorne, who were at the time considered the wooden spoon favourite. Probably not anymore. Uh, they lost to Carlton by four goals, and that was probably the last time we saw some reasonable form for them because they played all right in that game and just got outclassed by a side with better tools. But then a 75-point loss against Brisbane, a seven-goal loss to Gold Coast, and a 90-point loss to Melbourne. So we're seeing a very, very different North Melbourne to the side that came out at the start of the year. So don't have too much confidence for them in this game. St Kilda have dropped two of their last three. You consider one of them was Collingwood. The other one was a Port Adelaide side that has showed some grit and really switched it on after a pretty patchy opening month of the season. I give very, very little chance to North Melbourne in this game, to be honest. They'd have to tap into the form that saw them beat West Coast and uh, Fremantle in the way that they did. I know in hindsight, West Coast and Fremantle don't look like great sides, but the way North played and the flair they played with and the confidence was very, very different to what we're seeing now. I certainly haven't lost confidence in St Kilda just yet, they should make easy work of North Melbourne here. It might not be a massive belting. We know St Kilda's strength is restricting sides with their forward line issues. I don't expect them to kick 140 points in this game or anything like that, but we might see a dour sort of 30 plays 89 kind of scoreline. So there you go. I'll tip St Kilda up by 59 points. So there you have it, guys. That is my tips for round eight. Let me know in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with. We we'll try to be back to the usual program as much as possible over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'm here in America for another three days and I'm in Manchester this weekend. So I'll hopefully be able to watch some more footy. The time zones are a little bit more favorable. I've done a pretty good job of watching footy since I've been here in America. But, you know, when I was getting smashed in New York City over the weekend, that was where the system broke down, frankly. But we will be back. I'm going to Greece the week after that, but I should be able to get in all the videos that I have planned. Really appreciate your support and sticking fat with the channel, guys. Heaps more content to come. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.